Welcome everybody to the webinar tonight. I'm Trevor. I'm going to be hosting this and we are going to be talking um, almost exclusively about Google Analytics. You guys can see I'm sitting on Google Analytics, um, the, the site here, google.com slash analytics. But let me, let me just take the temperature of those, guys, of those of you guys who are here live right now. How many of you guys know about Google Analytics? You've heard of it, you've used it. Is this something you guys know much about or not quite so much? What do you guys think? Google Analytics, it's something that internet marketers um, use a lot, a whole lot actually. Not really, no, 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 no. Lots, lots of you guys are saying no, not so much. I'm seeing a couple of you say yeah, a little bit. Heard about it, okay, yeah, good. Well, I'm, I'm kind of glad that most of you guys don't really know much about it. Now, for those of you guys who have, um, who have marketing packages, a lot of times this gets set up for you. Um, like if you have a marketing package that our marketing department is doing for you, a lot of a lot of times the team just sets it up for you. If you don't have a marketing package that sets it up for you, I actually recorded just a short video earlier today that I'll post for you guys, and and you can and you can check this out. It'll show you how to load up analytics. Okay, it'll it should be here on the YouTube channel. Um, so you, you guys are welcome to check that out. But this is going to be more designed just to show you how it works, okay? And I'll, I'll kind of explain what it is. Google Analytics is a, it's a, it's a free software program that you sort of um, can install onto a website, and it'll, and it'll tell you how many visitors your website is getting, okay? I mean, much more than that. But that, in, in its simplest state, it, it's, like a, it's like a traffic counter. It tracks the number of people you get to the site. Um, Linda, you you have it, by the way. You have it. So if you're not sure if if this is something that's already being set up for you, um, check with your coach. They'll know. Some of you guys have it. Some of you guys don't. But if you don't have it, your coach can kind of show you how to get it put up onto the site, onto your site. So I'm going to assume, and we're not going to talk about the setup of it tonight. This is going to be more about how to use it and why it's important. So again, talk to your coach. If you don't have it set up on your website, they can guide you through it. Um, for those of you guys who have some marketing packages, a lot of times our marketing team just does the work for you and gets it set up. Okay. Um, okay. So Google Analytics, we, we use it guys because here's the problem. Like a lot of you guys who have websites, you measure your success on one metric, which is sales, right? Like you're, you, you consider yourself a very successful website if you're closing sales, and rightfully so, right? That's kind of what you want to do on a website. You want to close sales because that's how we're going to make money. But at the same time, you do yourself a little bit of an injustice or a disservice because that's not the only way to evaluate how well a website is doing. You have to think what leads to those sales. Which is, which is of course traffic. You got to get visitors before you can actually close sales. And um, Google Analytics here is basically what shows you how much traffic you're getting. Okay. Let me let me show you an example on an existing site right now. I'm gonna load. I'm gonna log into an older website of mine. Okay. In fact, I'll even show you what site I'm talking about. Okay, this one's called financialnut.com. It's way old. I started this site back in like 2000, I want to say it was 2008 I started this site. Like the design looks old. It's just kind of an old school site. It's a blog. It's a financial blog. There's information about finance and budgeting and how, you know, how to handle your money. I make money on this site off of some of the advertising 
um, what was interesting is it started out as kind of like a little hobby. I had this little blog that I was putting information on and, and later it started to get very popular. A lot of my, a lot of my blog posts started to get found in Google. And, um, and so because I got so much traffic to the site, I was able to, to sell advertising space, much like, you know, you look at like television programming, how do they make money? Well, they make money off of the advertising. It's not like the programming is selling a product directly. If they have a very popular TV show, they can sell advertising. Well, that's what this is essentially. It's a site that gets a lot of traffic. So therefore um, I've got a lot of sort of, you know, advertising throughout. So anyway, that's what this site is. I connected, um, I connected Google Analytics to it long ago. And so I'm going to show you some of those statistics and, and, and sort of show you how you guys can relate it to um, your own sites and how it can be useful. Okay. So let me bring up, let's see here. Let me bring up a new window. Hold on just a sec. One sec, guys. Okay. So here's here's a window. I'm I'm gonna go to Google.com slash analytics. That's the address. Okay, it'll take you to the home screen here. I'm just gonna sign in. Otherwise, if you were creating an account, it's really easy. You go to create an account here. The installation of the account on a new website isn't always easy, so talk to your coach about that. So let me log into this account. I'm going to log into, if I can remember my login here, financialnut at gmail.com. Let's see if I can remember my password. I'm sure you guys never have problems logging into anything, right? <laughs> like. You can always remember your passwords. I certainly can't. Okay, here we go. So here I am, I logged in. This is my Google Analytics account for this site. And what I do is I just click right here. This is assuming, of course, guys, that the setup is already done. Um, and, and if it's not on your site, I've got another video for that that you can check out or talk to your coach. Okay, so here we are. We're inside the Google Analytics account for this Financial Nut website. So first of all, what I want you guys to notice is here at the top right, you've got a you've got a date um, interval. You've got from February 2nd to March 4th, 2015. So those are the statistics. That's the date range that's being shown here. One month, roughly. And in one month, it shows me a little graph here, a little line chart that shows me how much traffic per day the site has gotten. So if I roll my mouse over any one of these single points, um, you're going to see, uh, I know it's probably hard for you guys to see because that's so little. I'll see if I can zoom in just a little bit. There we go. That might help you see it a little better. But like if I put my mouse over Thursday, February 10th, I had 470 visitors to the site. Okay can see if I roll my back mouse back over some of these days over here at the 1st of February, February 4th, I had 1,200 people come to the site. It was a big day, right? And then you can kind of see it ebb and flow. Down here, I've had some smaller days at 144 on Sunday the 21st. So you can just, just at a glance here, it's kind of nice. You can see how many visitors are coming to your site. Now, let me ask you guys a question real quick before I go on. Why, why do we even care about this right now? I'm, I'm assuming you guys care. Why do we care? Why would it be valuable for us to track how many how many visitors we're getting to our site? What do you guys think? If you're a really analytical person, right? Like I have a finance background. I, that's what I graduated in. So I like numbers and graphs and this stuff. This is right up my alley. I could sit and look at this stuff all day. But but what's the point? Frank, I like what you say. Bottom line is no visitors, no sales, right? So it's a way to track how many visitors we're getting. Um 
Kirk says to tell you maybe how, how well your SEO is working. Up to this point, we've talked a lot about how to get your website to rank high in Google so far. And if you're doing a lot of that kind of stuff, you're doing your SEO, it should at some point start to show you numbers here, right? It should drive traffic to your site. So it's a way to see how successful your marketing is, I would say, right? I would say that's true. Think about it this way. This is where I learned this principle. When I was, when I was younger, I worked at, for, for my dad, he had a, this is when I was back in high school, I worked for my dad and he had a, a pizza shop, right? He was a small business owner and this is, I, I feel like I learned a lot from him, um, you know, even when I was in high school. So I remember, and you guys might be able to relate to this if you've ever worked in any sort of like fast food situation. I feel like at one point or another, we've all been there. Um, but when I was working there, there were times where he would run these giant, um, these giant coupon ads where, you know, he would, he would put in like a, a coupon sheet, some sort of an advertisement in the local, in the local paper on like a Sunday. Right. And it would have all these little square cutouts. You could cut things out or you could cut out these little coupons and you could get you know, two dollars off a pizza or whatever, right? You know, you guys know what I'm talking about. So, what would happen is I would be running the register at night, and as people would come in and use these coupons, he would tell me to, of course, collect them. Right? He wanted me to hold on and count the number that actually got brought in. I was a teenager, right? I, I, I was in my mind. I'm like, why? I don't want to hold on to these. I don't want to collect them. Right? We'll just take them. We'll throw them away. But what was the point, guys? Why in the world would he have me collecting those coupons? Right? To see how effective the marketing was, right? Like if he's paying two grand a week to put in all these coupons, he'd certainly like to know how effective that marketing is, right? Because if, if he's bringing a ton of people in as a result, well, then he's going to keep advertising that way, right? But what happens if he's running this ad in the paper and nobody's coming into the store? We're probably not going to run that ad anymore because it's probably not worth our time or our money, right? That's, this, that's basically this principle right here. If you guys are working on various marketing strategies, right? Like you're doing a lot of SEO, you're doing a lot of link building, maybe you're doing a lot of social media advertising. It could be in Facebook or Twitter. Maybe you're, maybe you're, doing a lot of Pinterest advertising, right? You're spending, you're pumping in a lot of hours or maybe you're spending money on certain ad campaigns. Whatever the case may be, if it's not producing numbers here, if you can't go back and look in your Google Analytics and see your traffic coming in, it's probably, right? Like if you're not getting any traffic from it, then you're probably wasting your time, right? Does that make sense? That's kind of the feedback I'm getting from a lot of you guys. It's a way to understand your marketing. Most people, when they first start a website, they're like, okay, I'm going to understand how well something is simply by just counting my sales. But when you're a newer site and you're not getting a lot of sales, it's hard to really track how well your site's doing, right? So that's the point, guys. It's a good way just to see what's actually happening on your site, especially if you're not closing a lot of sales at the time. And it's a good way to evaluate how effective your marketing is. Now, let me show you something. This is, this is kind of neat because you can see much more than just um, a month's period. So let me click on this little icon up here, and I'm going to extend this back, um, we'll say about a year. Um, let's, so I can't, so you can do yesterday or last week, last month, last 30 days. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to customize it a little bit. I'm going to say for all of 2014, I want to see how well this site did. Okay. So I can select that. Let's go all the way up to December 31st, 2014, and I can hit apply. And this is my graph for the year here. Okay. Now, I don't know. I mean, can you see any trends here? Is there anything noteworthy about what you're seeing? Okay, you can see as you're reading the graph, this is the 150 visitor a day mark, this line right here. 300 visitors a day up here. 
Anything noteworthy here that you guys are seeing? Now, what's interesting is this is a daily look. So as I'm rolling my mouse over this data, I can see daily numbers. Um, maybe we do a weekly look. Yeah, that's actually a good observation, Larry. You're saying not much traffic during the summer. I think that's true. But sometimes it's kind of hard to see the data because it's daily. Let's look at weekly numbers. So this is tra this is now showing my numbers per week. So you know, I can see right here from January 12th to January 18th, I had 536 sessions. That's basically like uh, people coming to my site. Is that true? So yeah, I would say so. Like you can see it really kind of flatlines and gets really quiet here on my site from about May all the way until like September. That's a pretty good observation, Larry. I would say that's true. Yeah, I would say this site for whatever reason, financial nut struggles in the summer. Do you wanna know why that is though, seriously? My site doesn't have anything seasonal about it. It's just a finance site, but you know the truth is in the summer, People aren't cooped up on their computers all day long. People are outside. That's, that's the only thing I've been able to figure out because over the years that's absolutely been true of this site. Now, if some of you guys are selling like camping gear, outdoor gear, swimming pool supplies, you would probably see a noticeable spike in your traffic during the summer months, right? For obvious reasons, because it's seasonal. But for me, just because mine, mine wasn't tied to anything, it was just interesting that my summer months are lower and it's, all I can all I can guess is that it's probably because people are just not online as much. Yeah, summer vacations, people are outside, exactly. Very interesting. Okay, so what about a monthly view? Let's let's round out the data and see if we can look at it a little better on a monthly view. You can see on average this site is getting, you know, around 3,000 visitors a a month. So it's about 100 people a day, right? During, during 2014, it definitely lowers in the summer. There's no question about that. And then you can see it kind of ended on a high in December. There was 5,400 visitors that came to the site that month. Interesting, right? Okay, so this is for 2014. I, I chose this analytics account. I'll probably show you guys a different one for one of my sites to show you another trend. But I chose this one because it's kind of old. So let me let me show you even a... Um, a crazier date range here. Let's choose, let me scroll up. Let's go all the way back to the site's inception. I think this site started somewhere in 2008. We're gonna guess a little on the date here. Might've been 2009. Oh, I think it's 2008. We'll see. I, I, I remember, cause I started this around the time I, I um, got married. Let's try, I can't even remember, May of 2008. I'm going to hit apply here and we're going to look. Yeah, I think that's about right, May. Yeah, because you, you see right here, if you see my mouse, it says 0000. zero, zero, zero. So that's something about analytics. If you connect analytics today on a new site, it won't show you data from before. It only tracks from the day that you install it onto your site. So keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. Okay. So it's really hard. Like, look at this is daily data here. What do you, what do you guys see here? Isn't it kind of hard to see even what's going on on the site right now? Like this graph is really hard to read. Am I right? Because it's actually trying to count every single day, you know, over the last five or six years. It's really hard to see. So I need to change my view a little bit. I'm going to go to a week view. There, that helps a little bit, right? I can see a, a weekly view. What do you guys notice here? Anything interesting about the data? I'll just point to some data points. This is about when I started. It looks like um, June 29th, 2008. I had 53 visitors between that and July 5th. My first week, I had 50 visitors, right? You can see some of these these high peaks out here. Spikes are interesting. Yeah, and I peaked around 2011. You want to know a funny thing here? I actually worked pretty aggressively on my marketing at the end of 2011, and then I quit completely because I got busy with other things, other businesses and stuff, and you can see an, an obvious dip after that. 
But what I think is very interesting, let me take this to a monthly view for you guys. Okay, that's monthly. So you can see in my first month, July 31st, or J July 1st, July 31st, I had 426 visitors. And it stay in my next month I had 2100 so there was a big jump. I was aggressively marketing here at the very start. I was link building, guys. I was I was doing SEO. I was doing a lot of the things that you guys are starting to do right now. And I think this is valuable for you to see because even over the first few months of aggressive marketing, it was pretty level. Like 426, 2100 in August, September I had a, about 1000. October, I had 2,300. November, I had 1,600. See how it's all kind of flatlining around that 1,500 to 2,000 mark? And I was aggressively marketing. So I, I, I show you that because you know what? If your only strategy is a search engine strategy, which is what mine was, I didn't ever pay even a dollar of marketing for this site. I did everything myself. I did all my SEO. I did all my link building. Um, you can see that that didn't pay off very quickly. It took some time for the search engines to trust me for a lot of the reasons that we're talking about in some of our, in some of our previous webinars, it takes time to a do your SEO and then B get recognized and appreciated by Google. So you can start pulling some rankings. I think that's an important piece of information for you guys. So don't get frustrated because I've seen a lot of clients they start this process and they get frustrated three or four months into it because they're not just slamming tons of traffic onto their site. And it's like, just hold on a little bit because if you can see here, as 2009 went, went on, I really started to see a lot more success, right? Okay, so now notice, um, so okay, so I did a lot of marketing here, okay, all of 2009. I stopped towards the end of the year because I got busy with stuff. And you know, it's a funny thing. Look at how my graph dips down and sort of levels out here. But notice how it levels out at a higher point than it was previously. So my average month through here when I was doing literally no marketing, none, seriously, all I did was just have this site. And I was just selling a little advertising on it. I was doing no marketing here whatsoever and I'm still getting 3,000 visitors a month, right? So I decide that I feel like the site's worth its time and I start marketing it at the start of 2011. And, and I've learned a lot since then. And I've got some great SEO strategies and I've got some trust with Google now. And look at the way it just shot up, right? I mean, there was one month, March of 2011, I had 30,000 visitors to the site. I was averaging 1,000 people to the day or to the site every single day in March. I just did a tremendous amount of marketing. Then I stopped again. Okay, and then look what happens. It plateaus again, but look how it plateaus higher than it ever has been before. My plateau here was seven, 8,000 visitors a month, whereas my plateau back in 2010 was around 3,000, whereas my plateau in 2009 was around 1,500. So you can see how it, you can see how it, build, or it builds over time. So anyway, long story short, guys, I haven't really done much marketing or put any, <laughs> any effort whatsoever into this site since, I don't know, since the end of 2011. I've barely even gotten onto it. I sell a little advertising space and I make money off of it, but I don't, I don't create more content. I just let it go. And look, at, look what's happened over time. It's just slowly sort of dropped. My traffic is, you know, is really struggling now because I totally dropped it, okay? Didn't do any marketing whatsoever. Didn't even get on and add more content. Had I maintained it, my, my guess is I'd probably, my numbers would be a lot higher. Now, why did I drop it? Why did I sort of stop? I got other opportunities that I felt were better and I pursued those instead. And I'm, I'm still, I'm glad I did, but I've still got the site. And the great part about it is I can just sell advertising, do nothing on it and make money off the advertising. It's a pretty nice gig. But I show you this, these numbers here and this, and you know, these graphs, because I think it's just really important for you guys to see that over time, just like any company would, you know, you're going to, your, your interest in your website is going to ebb and flow. And I hope if you stay consistent with it and you're doing your SEO and you're doing your link building, you're doing the things that we're talking about, you can stay consistently moving up. You're going to have plateaus just like I had. 
but the hope is you'll just consistently move in an upwards direction, right? Um, any other comments on this graph as we're looking at it right here? Anything you guys want to point out? Yeah, Catherine, I haven't really overlaid this data with how the market was doing, and I don't think there'll be there'll be a correlation. Catherine's asking if I if I ever looked at this in relation to the stock market, um, and I haven't because it's it's somewhat market based. It talks about stocks a little bit, but it also talks about stuff that wouldn't be as related to the market. So I don't think there's a real correlation here, but there could be. It's something that I could certainly look at for sure. Okay, so guys, at it, it's at its simplest form, Google Analytics will will track the number of visitors you get, but it does so much more than that. So let me let me go back to a more a more reasonable um, range, a, a date range here. I don't want to look at all these years at once. Let me just go back to uh, last month. Okay, let's look at last month. I had 10, so last month I had 10,500 visitors to the site, okay? Um, let's actually drill into that data a little bit because you can learn so much more about your visitors other than just the fact that you've got that many people to your site. That's why analytics is really powerful. So I'll scroll down here and let me show you some of these graphs. Um, it's got this pie chart here that says 8.7% um, of my visitors were returning, people who had been to the site before. 91% were new visitors, so that's an interesting metric. One out of one out of ten people comes to my site, kind of on a on a regular basis or has been there before. Um, there's some stats here that are really interesting. Average session duration. That's the average amount of time, kind of right here above my mouse. Average session duration. The average amount of time that somebody stays on my site when they get there. 20 seconds. Okay. Is that a good number? Oh, it depends. I mean, and, and you're going to ask me, well, Trevor, what kind of a number should I be looking for? Well, it's it it mine is going to be different. Mine's just an informational site. Your guys' sites a lot of times are going to be e-commerce sites. So, you know, we're comparing apples and oranges here. But you know, 20 seconds a piece. I don't think that's a great number. Um, you know, you're going to get people that are going to jump on the site and then jump right off because it's not what they were looking for, and other people are going to stay on the site for a while. I'll show you those stats. Um, this rate right here is an interesting one, the bounce rate. It's, it's often misunderstood. Bounce rate means that 90, so I, I've got a 92, almost a 93% bounce rate. It just means that, uh, you know, 9 9.3 out of 10 people, right, 9 out of 10 people, when they get to my site, they leave on the same page they entered. Okay, so it doesn't have anything to do with how long somebody's on my site. A bounce rate just me a bounce just means if they found my site through my home page and they left on my home page, they didn't go explore other pages, then that's a bounce. If somebody comes in through my home page but then clicks on one of my other pages that are that's there, then that's not a bounce. So nine out of 10 people come to the page that they found initially in the search engine and they leave from the same page. Is that a good stat? I don't know. It'd be something I would have to sort of um, look at over time. I can see, I can see data and analytics that'll show me, show me how my bounce rate is going up and down over time. I could, I, I could look at that if I wanted to. In fact, if I click on it, let's see if it'll actually take me to the page that analyzes it. Yeah, well, this is just showing for the month. So I could go back out here for this data and I could grab, you know, I could grab several months and it could show me. So I could do like weekly and it'll show me for the week, 94% at the start of the week, 92%, 91%, 90%, 91%, right? So you can track like how your bounce rate is looking. But anyway, that's, I, I won't go into bounce rate as much right now. Okay. So let's look at, um, let's go back to a monthly view here. Let's look at down here where you see language. Now this is kind of interesting. You can see number one, English is the, is the number one language of people who found my site, but you can see other countries here are finding my site. In fact, if I click country right here on the left, I can see all the different people from different countries that are finding it, right? It's kind of interesting. I mean, obviously 
United States and Canada, uh, United Kingdom, Australia, all English speaking countries are by far the ones that are finding me most. But you can see I've got some other countries that are finding me too. Okay, you can even drill down further into the city or the browser people use, the operating system, what kind of mobile phone they use to find my site. And, you know, those, those statistics, I mean, there's as, as many statistics, I suppose, as you want, but that's not going to be all that useful for probably some of the stuff that we're doing. Okay. What I think is really useful, and we could probably spend hours looking at all the different fun functions of analytics, but what I think is going to be most useful for you guys is you want to come down here to the audience section and you want to look at this section right here called acquisition okay I'm gonna click on that I'm gonna to go to the acquisition overview for just a second now remember we're still looking at this date this interval right here February 1st to February 28th okay and it shows you a little graph or a little pie chart of where all my traffic is coming from this is pretty cool stuff right because let me walk, let me just zoom in so you guys can see this just a little bit better look how my organic traffic is 65% now tell me guys what what is organic traffic what's that talking about there what's organic traffic mean Catherine, you're right on you're right on the money. This is this is what organic traffic is. If somebody goes to Google and they do a, a keyword search like how to do a budget in Excel, right? They do a keyword that would be something that this site would have on it. So they do a keyword search for that. It's any it's any ad on Google that's not a paid ad, okay? None of none of these are paid ads here. These are all organic ads, but if I do a more common search like um, budgeting or something in Google you sometimes get paid ads this right here up at the top is a paid ad an organic listing organic traffic is, is 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 where people come into my site off of ads that I didn't pay for okay that's what organic traffic is so it's organic it's free Google traffic I'm not paying for any advertising in Google right now so all of this would be free organic traffic where people are just finding me for free, okay? Um, does that make sense? Let me know if that I need to clarify that. Now in the green here, direct traffic is people who just basically went up here into the, the address bar here at the top and just said, I want to go to financialnut.com, okay? If they, if they did that and went directly to my site, that, that right there would be direct traffic. That's, that's what 30% of people did. Interesting, right? So 30% of all of that traffic during the month were people who were just like, okay, I'm going to go check it out on financialnut.com. Okay. And then you've got this small sliver right here. This is referral traffic. This is, this is where my site was on a different site through a link and somebody clicked on the link and found me. That's referral. And then you see how social here is in yellow, but it has almost nothing. My site very rarely gets found in social media. I never really got into a lot of social media marketing with Financial Nut. The vast majority of my traffic comes from free search engines like Google or Yahoo or Bing, okay? Now you can drill down into this data even further and I can come down here. Here it is right here out of the total 10,500 visitors I had last month. 6,000 were organic or almost 7,000, 3,200 were direct, and you can see referral and then social. Almost nobody found me through social media, okay? So had I been doing a lot of social advertising and this was my result, I would probably, I, I guess I would decide two, one of two things. Either I'm really bad at social media or social media just doesn't work for my industry, okay? Now, I haven't been doing any social media ad advertising for this site. In fact, I haven't been doing any advertising. This is just, this is kind of the power of uh, SEO. Because if you guys do good search engine optimization, I mean, isn't it neat that I can not do a thing with this site, yet it can still drive me almost 7,000 visitors throughout the month? That, that's the power of SEO. So that's why we teach you guys so aggressively to do link building and to do SEO because it can drive that kind of traffic without you lifting a finger, which is pretty neat stuff. Um, let me see some of your guys' comments here.
Oh, Laura, welcome. Yeah, it's good to have you here anyway. Glad you, glad you made it, even though you're late. Larry says, what is SEO? SEO is basically where you, you do things on your site with keywords and there's some other there's some other things that you do on and off your site to help it rank high in Google. So SEO stands for search engine optimization. So you're you're doing things for your website to get it to rank high in Google. In other words, Larry, and you'll you'll learn more about that of course as we work together, but that 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 in essence is what it is. So I can look into this. So here's what's interesting. I can go further. Um I'm going to go here to acquisition. I'm going to go all traffic. And let's look at channels for just a second. Okay, I can look here. So here's my different channels, and I can click on organic search. And this is this is where it gets really interesting because now I can figure out what it is that people are typing in that are leading them to my site. So what is it here, guys? Look at this. Here's my top 10 keywords that were driving traffic to my site. Yeah, right? That's pretty obvious, isn't it? Look at all these different variations. So I, I, I had put some content on this site a while ago that sort of discussed why, why gas prices go up and down. Um, I would put in some research and written some content on it. And it's just, it's ranking really well. A lot of people are finding my site through that keyword phrase or through, through something related to gas prices going up and down. Now, what's neat here is this is only, this is only 10 different search terms. I can, I can show this data a little bit better. And you're going to see that out of all the 6,860 visitors I've gotten through search engines. I'm just going to scroll through here and you guys can see all the different kinds of keywords that people are typing in to find me. These are all different keyword phrases, by the way. You see that? I mean, look at some of these crazy keyword phrases. Number 149, two people found my site by typing this into the search engine. How much does the average American spend on fast food per year? I, I, I had some information on my site about that. But as you scroll down, you can see all the different, all the different variations. There's, there's, I mean, I can keep scrolling. There you go. See that? So that's in that's in a month. So what I mean, what's interesting about that to you guys? There's a thousand different types of keywords people found me typing in. There's only a handful here that drove me a ton. This one right here drove me a ton of traffic. There's a few that drove me a ton of traffic, but there's also tons here that I was never targeting that that you know people were finding my site. That's what's interesting about your SEO. If your if your site is strong enough, it can it can drive you traffic for a lot of different variations of keywords. These a lot of these right here are called we would refer to these as long tail keyword phrases, okay? Which are just keyword phrases that are, you know, three, four, five, six, seven, eight words that are strung together. A lot of people were finding me using those different types of words. So why why I show this to you guys is is because I want you to understand that, you know, I don't like my site. This this financial nut site doesn't rank really high for any one competitive keyword phrase. I'm not driving thousands of of visitors to my site through one type of search because I've done enough SEO across the entire site. The the site has several hundred pages on it. So like for you guys who have several hundred products on a site, you know, if you can get your products all to rank for a few of those different keyword phrases that you're trying to target it for, you can get a, just a tremendous amount of traffic. Bigger sites like that have the ability to produce more and more traffic. 
And then you can also see the value of maybe having a blog at some point too, because a, a blog will create this kind of interest and traffic to a site where you're not ranking for just one huge keyword phrase. And that's the, I think that's a big misunderstanding out there. You, you, you know, newer website owners are like, yeah, I really want to rank for the words pearl jewelry, right? I've got this pearl website. It'd be really cool if I ranked for pearl jewelry. And if they're not ranking on the first page, they're devastated and they think their site's going to fail. But that's not true at all. If you use what we're learning tonight and you can see your statistics here, you can see this just proves the fact that you don't need to rank for one huge keyword phrase rank for lots of less competitive keyword phrases, and you can still just get a crazy amount of, of visitors to your site. I'm gonna look at some of your comments again. Catherine says, does it make sense then to use keyword phrases that that is specific enough, but also includes something more broad? Um, yeah, I mean, Possibly this this is this is a little bit of a different example because this site is it's a blog it's an informational site so it has tons of content and therefore tons of different keyword phrases um, so I may have optimized it in fact I think I optimized one of these pages for this right here gas prices going up and so I rank for that page but what's cool about it is if I'm ranking for this keyword phrase, I'm going to rank for a lot of variations of it too. And that's what you're seeing. That's what you're seeing happen here. So although this might have been my target, my target phrase for one of my pages, um, you can see that, you know, there's a lot of variation there too. Yeah. And, and Bill, I have to agree. So Bill says, so SEO is important within the site. Yeah. I mean, had I not done a bunch of link building, and had I not done a bunch of SEO and keyword research, I would probably be struggling, right? I wouldn't, I wouldn't be pulling all this traffic for all these different types of keywords. And this is only, right, we're looking at just a month. Think of all the variation throughout the life of my site. It's had half a million visitors to it. We're only looking at a 10,000 visitor segment. You can see, I mean, if we looked at, I probably have tens of thousands of different types of keywords that got people to my site. So it's, it's interesting to see that data. For you guys with new sites, I mean, you're obviously not looking back on your data yet because you don't have a lot of data to look at. But I, I, I use this as a way just to prove the fact that, you know, over time, if you've done your SEO well and you continue to link build, all of this traffic can come to you for free without doing anything at all. It's really front end loaded. Like we talked a few weeks ago, a lot of you guys were like, man, that you know, this marketing stuff, it takes a lot of time and, and a lot of energy. I had no idea it was going to take this much time. Well, it does at first, but if you can put yourself in a position like this and you do it well enough, you can sit back and really see a lot of traffic come in for free over time. And that hopefully you guys are kind of seeing that that's the point. Yeah, Lorna, sometimes the keyword phrase here is the same as the title of the article. In fact, let me see if I can find, uh, let's see here, landing page. Okay, let me click right here. You see where this says landing page? This shows where people, what page of the site people were finding me. So this, this page right here, I'm going to right click on it. Let me see if I can load up this page. Here we go. You can click on this little square and it'll open up the page that was getting all this traffic. 5,000 visitors came to one page and it was this one right here. And the title of the page was Why Are Gas Prices Going Up Again? And this is all it was. It's this short article here. But isn't, this, isn't it it's interesting that this article was written back in December of 2010? Yet in February of 2015, it managed to pull in 5,000 visitors to this page. So, the, I mean, it, it speaks a little bit to the power of having a blog because if you create decent content that starts to rank high, even if, I mean, I wrote this five years ago, yet in February of 2015, you know, it sent me, it sent me 5,000 visitors, right? That, that, that right there is the power of a blog. And essentially, that's what this financial nut is. This is, this is a blog. Um, 
you guys who are doing marketing, we're, we're going to be creating blogs and using that to send your, your actual store traffic. But it's kind of interesting to know. Now, let me, let me take you guys into something real quick. We've been looking at this blog site. Let me take you into something that I thought might be of interest to you guys. I'm going to take you into the Mockingjay pin store side of mine. And I want to show you the analytics for that. Hold on just a sec. Let me go to, let me show you the site first. This one right here, I brought it up in some of the webinars before. I'm not showing you guys the jewelry site right now, the Pearl site, because it just doesn't have enough data in the analytics. Like it's, it's going, you know, you're getting like four or five visits a day to the site. This is, this one's been up for a few years. So I'm going to see if I can go to, let me go to Gmail and log into analytics for the Mockingjay site, because that's more of an e-commerce store. And then, and then we'll, we'll chat for a little more and then we'll finish up. Hold on just a sec, guys. The, I, this analytics stuff, it's, it's, uh, there's just so much it shows you. So you have to be kind of careful with it because you can spend, what you don't want to do is get in here and spend hours and hours on end pouring over the data, especially at the start because you're not going to have a lot of data here for a newer site. Google.com slash analytics. Hold on. Sorry, I'm doing this on another screen here so I can pull it up for you guys. Okay. This one is for Financial Nut. Now, Financial Nut, <clears throat> or no, sorry, not Financial Nut, but Mockingjay Pin Store. So you can see right here in the last month, it's not getting nearly the traffic. It's getting about 30... 30 or 40 visitors a day. But what would you guess about this site? Because this sells, this sells memorabilia from that really pop popular um, Mockingjay or Hunger Games series, right? So what do you think? You think seasonal or not? You think this would be a seasonal type product? I'm going to go back and try to figure out when this all started. This is probably good enough. This is from, so I'm showing you from April 2013 to March of 2015. This is the graph right here. What, what do you guys notice about the graph? This is, this is a monthly view. So this is my monthly traffic here. You see anything trending here? Notice the spikes come October, November, December, both years, October, November, December. Why would it sp spike in October, November, December? Well, that's a lot of you guys have already said it. That's when the movie came out. So I would bet next year it'll spike again during those months. Now, I don't think it's just because the movie came out. I think that's part of it. But what, what do most e-commerce sites do during... October, November, December. That's holiday shopping, right? Yeah, so we do a ton of business during those months, and that's because the search volume is up and people people are buying more. So that's so that would this would be very very similar to what you guys would probably be seeing on your side. Come the holidays, just by virtue of the fact that it is the holidays, there's more shoppers, there's more searches that happen online. And therefore, your traffic goes up pretty substantially. So I think this coupled with the movies coming out is what's driving all this traffic. Okay, and then I could dig into the numbers here too. Um, I'll just show you for the last couple of years, right? I can come down here to acquisition and I can see all traffic. And we'll go to channels like we did before on the other site. And you can see organic search. How interesting this is, 72, I know this is kind of hard to read, but almost 73% of all of my traffic comes for free in Google. Um, the rest is, is pretty low, a little bit from social media, almost 2%, some referral traffic, some direct traffic, but again, it's, it's that Google or organic search. And if I click on that, here's my top 10 keywords. Okay. Now I rank, so not, no surprise. This is my main product here, right? The Mockingjay pen. If I go to Google, I've showed you guys this before. 
I rank kind of on the middle of the first page for it, I think. Let me just type it in, Mockingjay pen. Whoops. By the way, we're almost done, guys. I know this has been kind of a heavier session. Yeah, Mockingjay pen. Here I am right here, middle of the first page. So that, what's interesting is that that's my main focused keyword phrase that I'm trying to actually get traffic to my site for but that's only sent me 5% of my total traffic. That's it. Where does all my traffic come from? Well, just like we looked at before, let me, let me expand out the data here, and you can do that here at the bottom right. And I'll scroll down, look at where I'm getting all my traffic, just from, ver some, from various variations of the search. The vast majority of my traffic isn't coming from you know, these top keyword phrases, right? Like the obvious ones that you're trying to rank for, which is again, what you, what's gonna surprise you guys about your sites is, is your, a lot of your traffic is gonna come from this um, long tail stuff that you don't even try to target necessarily. Like the, I didn't do SEO to try to target a lot of these keyword phrases. I just naturally started pulling up for a lot of it because my because my site has a fair amount of authority. It's got a lot of links pushing into it. And so Google just naturally brings me up for all these different types of searches. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of different variations of searches. And you know, the, the other thing I haven't really commented on that's kind of interesting, I'll scroll back up here to the top, but per keyword phrase, you can see how effective it is. So for the 1,500 visitors I've gotten for Mockingjay pin, um, my bounce rate is 48%, which is pretty, seems pretty low. Um, average time on the site is about two minutes. So you can see your average, you know, site visit per keyword. So you can see which keywords are more effective than others. So I don't know, guys, you guys, you guys can see how this stuff, I mean, it's just mind boggling how much data this thing will crank out for you. And, you know, you could sit and crunch numbers and make, make inferences about how well your site's doing based off of this data all day long. My recommendation, if you, it, it, and this is, this is especially for a newer site, if you've got analytics installed onto your site and you can track all this data like we're doing tonight, you might wanna log in once every couple of weeks, maybe once every month, and, and, see, how you're, and see how you're doing. Check in on it about you know, once a month or so. Maybe once every two weeks. If you're doing a ton of marketing, and you want to see what's working, once every couple of weeks would probably be fine too. You'll have to decide, but don't do it more than that. A lot of you guys who are newer at this and who are marketing like crazy, you're going you're gonna to have to fight the temptation to try to log into this stuff and look at it every single day. I mean, I, I did it. And, it, and, it, and it, you, it's just, it's not, it's not a good use of your time. You're always like checking in to see if you're getting more traffic. It's not worth your time. Just check every once every few weeks and see what's happening on the site and see if you can make some decisions. This data is good for nothing if it doesn't help you make some good data-driven decisions, right? So if you guys are spending half of your allotted time each month working on social media, yet you get in, you get in here and you see that social media isn't driving you traffic, then you need to stop and you need to, you need to focus your time and, and energy, your marketing time that you've got. And I know you guys only have a certain amount of time to work on this every week. A lot of you guys have jobs that you've got, you've got families, you've got friends, you've got a life outside of work. There's only a finite number of hours that you can work on this. And, you know, if, if that's all you've got, that's all you've got. So you've got to make sure you're allocating that time effectively. If social media is not doing it, maybe you need to spend more time on your SEO. And if over time your SEO is not working and you're not getting enough traffic, maybe you need to consider doing more link building so that Google considers bringing you up. So this is, if for nothing else, I mean, it's interesting to look at, and I hope hopefully I've, I've established that a little bit tonight. But more importantly than that, you ought to get in here and be able to help, you know, use this data to help you make better decisions about how you spend your time. And if you're spending money, how you're spending money on your marketing. That's what Google Analytics is for, okay? All right, so I'm almost done here. We could we could get into so much more. There's just more data we could look at, but we're not going to do it because we don't have time. Let me see if I can let me see if I can get to a few of your questions, and then we'll finish up. Um, 
Linda asked, what's referral traffic? Referral traffic, I'll click on referrals here. It's just different websites that are referring traffic to your site. So like if I look at this data here, I'm gonna see you know various websites here. You know, I don't know, you can see that some of them are like, it'll show some search engines. YouTube is referring some traffic to me. Different Googles, google.es, google.it, that's probably the Italian version of Google. I don't even know what this site is, swagbucks.com. Referrals are actually interesting because you can, you know, you can, if, if you're doing some marketing on blogs or different websites, you can see what blogs or other websites are sending you traffic. So if it's not a direct search and it's not a Google search, it's usually something here, a referral site that's got your link on it somewhere that's, that's sending you traffic. That's, that's usually what a referral is. Kirk says, so it seems before marketing through social media, you should first make sure your SEO and link building is on point. Um, yeah, I mean, maybe it, some, I've, I've seen some websites that like they, they just, they're, they're really good at social media. That's what, you know, that's what sort of works for them. And, and they spend more time on their social media than they do on your, on their SEO. To me, SEO isn't, it's not something that's going to send you immediate traffic. And you saw that in the numbers that we ran tonight, at least in my experience, but it's, it's, it's an investment. Right, it's like sticking money into the stock market and waiting a few years to see that money magically double or triple. I'm not saying it's going to take you guys a few years to get traffic from search engines. I'm just saying that you won't get it tomorrow or even maybe next week, but over the coming weeks and months, you'll start seeing your SEO, your search engine marketing pay off. Until you get to the point that's exciting like this where you know, like I, I don't spend time link building on these sites. I don't need to because I've already got good search engine rankings. You can really sit back and your job then is if you want to grow it further, you can. But if you're satisfied with what it's doing, which I am with a couple of these sites, I sit back, I take care of customers, I make money off of advertising, and I just run my company. And, and I don't have to worry about some of that other stuff that you guys are so busy worrying about right now. Okay, so this was this was a lot in one session. I certainly appreciate you guys coming. I, hopefully this was somewhat enlightening for you guys that do have analytics installed. This stuff will become very, very useful for you. Not yet, probably. You probably don't have enough traffic. Don't freak out if over your first couple of months your traffic's not moving up, right? Especially if you're doing SEO because it probably won't be. But um, over time it should be, and you ought to be able to read that through these numbers, okay? All right, well, we'll finish up then. Um, I appreciate you guys coming. I'm gonna turn off the recording and then just answer any last lingering questions and then we'll, we'll adjourn until next week.